Hello, this is Gata7, and welcome back to Crash Course C Sharp. Today we will learn about different data types in C Sharp. I won't be covering the obscure ones, just the main few you'll use. But before we learn about data types, we have to learn about variables. Imagine a variable as a kind of container. You can put something inside it, but the thing is, you can only put an object that matches the type of container. For example, if the container wants you to put inside a beverage, you could not put inside a hot dog, but you could put inside water or apple juice. So how you declare a variable is like this. You put down the type of variable. I'll just put int for now. More on that later. You give your variable a name. I'm just going to call it number. Very creative, I know. And then you say it equals a value. In this case, I'm just going to put 3. And then you put a semicolon to tell the compiler that the statement has finished. So what this int right here means is integer, which if you are unfamiliar with math terminology, it means a whole number. We are only allowed to put a whole number in it. But funny enough, you can only store a number up to around 2 billion, which may not be enough in some very rare cases. The reason why is very technical as it relates to how numbers are stored in a computer's memory, but that is outside the scope of this series. But anyways, to get around that restriction, we can use this data type called a long, which stands for a long number. As you would guess, you can fit very big numbers in this thing. In fact, if you were to start with zero and increment by one every nanosecond, it would take 292 years to reach the maximum length of this thing. The only downside is that this thing uses twice the memory of an int. All the number types I'm showing you today can have negative values, by the way, just so I'd bring that up. So at this point, you may be like, gotta, that's cool, but how do I store decimals? And I'll show you that right now. We use to store decimal points is something called a floating point number, or float for short. So float number with decimals equals... 3.3f. And now what the f means is float, but if I were to get rid of it, it would not say it was float because if you put any number with decimals to begin with, it's going to assume that it's a double, but as you can see, we're trying to store floats. And like I said, with the whole container thing, you cannot put a hot dog into a liquid container. So, therefore, we must say it's 3.3 .3 as a float. The reason why it's called a float is very technical, and again, outside the scope of this series, as it relates to more low-level computer stuff. But like the int, this only has a certain range, so if you want crazy big numbers with decimals, you, can, you use double, which means double the memory size of a float. And it's also more precise as well, so keep that in mind. And so double D equals. And now this time you can say something like 4.5, just like that. Oh, and just for the sake of having all the numbers we have, long L equals, I don't know, some big number. But floats and decimals do have a weird quirk. And that is, operations using them can lead to inaccuracies. This is very unfortunate if you are talking about money, as you don't want a rounding error to cause you to lose any money. So to prevent this, there is a super precise type known as a decimal, which takes up four times the amount of memory as a float does. You should probably only use a decimal for money. So decimal bank balance equals... 3.454 or 3 dollars and 4 5 cents and it's actually yelling me right now because it's uh, saying you should create use an m suffix to create a literal of this type so I'm just going to do what the compiler says and put m at the end as in the m is most likely for money the next data type is a character or char for short what a char does is store a single character like the letter H, the percent symbol, etc. How you tell the compiler that the value you're assigning to it is a char and not a number or the name of another variable is by putting single quotes around the character like this. So you put char 
letter H equals just like that and there we go you have a character for the letter H and then you can also do things like char percent symbol equals you know the percent symbol exactly what it sounds like now the next variable is a cool one as it's called a string you can think of it as a string of characters as that's pretty much what it is it's like a char but you can put as many characters as you want inside of it and surround it by double quotes instead of single quotes so string phrase equals and then you also have the option to just put nothing in it but I could put this is a string now here's an interesting thing you can do here let's create one of those right line statements with a read key so council dot right line oh in case you didn't know you can also put nothing in these f things and it'll do exactly what you think and just print a line with nothing on it so I'm also going to do council dot read key and now let's see what you can do you can actually just put number in here and if I click start it just prints out the number whatever was in number now if you go ahead and do um, bank balance and you see it says 3.45 and now let's go ahead and try phrase what do you think it'll do if you guessed um, display the string then that is correct now here's an interesting thing you may not have known when you're typing out the name of a variable if you click the tab key it'll automatically complete it so that saves a lot of time so your challenge for today is to print out hello world but using a variable to store the text I also want you to print out a negative decimal number as well using a variable and do it without a variable as well just for fun without using quotation marks of any kind you can use quotation marks for the hello world part though I should also mention that the compiler reads from top to bottom meaning you cannot just use a variable before you create it which I hope makes sense due to obvious reasons I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I'll see you all later